can see, I'm enjoying my morning walk with my dog in uh, my garden. <laughs> That's what I tell some people anyway. Um, just along the towpath and uh, it's a beautiful morning and I thought I'd take the opportunity and tell you the pros and cons of living on a wide beam compared to a narrow boat. Um, you know, I, I was on a narrow boat for about four years and I loved it. Right, so um, the positives of living on a wide beam. Um, you've obviously got a lot more room and um, and with a lot more room you can do a lot more things and one of the major things that I found that's impressed me so much is having the roof space. Um, this has enabled me to have a lot more solar panels and well to be honest I've put six panels on my roof and I could easily put another six on my roof so this has given me an immense amount of power so I've also got a lot more room on the inside I've got the same amount of room now as I would do if it was a flat um, so it feels more like a spacious area and not so claustrophobic another massive advantage of having a wide beam is that you can store a lot more on it and fit a massive water tank on board and um, anybody who lives on a boat will know one of the biggest drawbacks is that you've got to get to water every week or every two weeks I don't know many people have to go that go much further than uh, every two weeks um, on my narrow boat it was be very very careful of the water usage and I would literally only just scrape by and get to two weeks um, on this wide beam I've got it's about 500 litres of water and I'm not careful I do my washing with a washing machine on on board and have as many showers as I like I run the water as if it was in a, a normal home and um, I'm you know three weeks down the road and I'm sorry I'm spinning around because my dog keeps tying me up <laughs> um, yes yeah, so I use I use the water as as much as I would do in a house and I'm not struggling at all I haven't ran out yet um, so I think one of the things I will do at some point is fit a gauge so I know exactly how much water I've got on board uh, but I haven't got that at the moment so another advantage of having a wide beam particularly if you've got a sail away compared to a narrow boat is that you've got all the room on the inside to be able to fit the tools and all your materials and work on it quite easily um, when I was uh, fitting out or doing some maintenance on my narrow boat it was really particularly hard to actually um, work on it purely because there was no room to put anything and you were squeezing past the tools or the materials um, constantly and uh, you know if you made <clears throat> if you made a mess um, well you had to uh, tidy it up pretty much soon after because um, otherwise you couldn't live in the space and uh, on a wide beam you don't have that problem I've literally got a, a room uh, currently I've got a room that uh, I put all my tools in and I work out of that room as if it was a shed which is me it makes it a lot easier for me um, to get on with things the advantages of having a narrow boat over a wide beam um, 
the major ones is that it is a lot smaller and you can get to more places and you can pass other boats and more up in more useful places and more convenient places most of the time and when you come across another boat they don't freak out because they're the same as you and normally you can pass that's not the case with the wide beam usually the wide beam gives way to the narrow boat and um, yeah it's, a, it's certainly a lot slower moving on a narrow boat compared to uh, sorry it's a lot slower moving on a wide beam compared to a narrow boat um, purely because of the size and you're having to give way all the while and obviously you can get up through the locks um, onto the sections when there's narrow locks so it's a it's a lot more you know there's a lot more network available to you to be able to navigate that to me is the biggest advantage of uh, having a narrow boat also one of the things I've noticed since being on the wide beam is that you don't get so much respect as if you were on a um, on a narrow boat everybody's in the same group of people or that's how it seems uh, when you're on a narrow boat you're uh, you're in the club as such when you go on a wide beam that's not the case um, you get a lot of people speeding past you and being quite disrespectful um, because they think that you shouldn't be on an, a wide beam for whatever reason and um, they treat you with a lot of disrespect for some reason. I've got, I caught a bit of this on video because I thought, well, surely is this me? <laughs> You know, are people being that weird and uh, just treating me differently just because I have a different size boat? It's, it's very discriminate. Anyway, I've caught it on film and I'll, uh, I'll show you that. You alright? No. Sorry? Your Thank you. You should slow. You should slow down a bit though. Ooh. That serves them right. What's happened? Look. <laughs> Because they were going full speed, not even kidding, full speed, and the, there was bow waves. Wow, we turned their boat. So stupid. Are they day boaters, darling? No. No, they should be. Now look, they go, they're bumping the other side. Crazy. Yeah, they're going to hit the other side now. What's wrong with them? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> they wouldn't do that past a narrow boat. They would not do that. So why do they think they should do it past our boat? I've no idea. For those who don't know, um, and I'm sure a lot of new people don't realise when you slow down you lose all of your ability to be able to steer the boat not all of it but most of it so if you're trying to move in close quarters to another boat or a corner or some object that may be in the water you need to slow down before you get to it um, and then you can put the power on slowly to maneuver around it because you get all of your drive and your steering from your prop. So the worst things about living on a wide beam 
as I've already said, it's the disrespect that you get from others in uh, narrowboats. Uh, it's not nice. Um, I've had quite a bit of abuse from others telling me that I shouldn't live on a wide beam and these are on narrowboats, it's a choice surely. Um, that they choose, they've chosen to live on a narrowboat or holiday on a narrowboat or part share or whatever they do. They've chosen that route. Just as I've chosen to live on a wide beam now. Um, it's just a choice. Surely we should all have our own choices. Um, and the second thing that I find um, not so great, being on a wide beam, is not being able to navigate the same stretches as I would do if I was on a narrow boat. There's some beautiful places I'm never going to be able to go again. So that's all I can think of, of the negative of living on a uh, wide beam. Um, the negative for living on a a uh, narrow boat compared is obviously only two things I can think of and that is space and the ability to store a lot of water. So would I recommend you go into a narrow boat or a wide beam? Um, I think it's all dependent on what you want if you want to travel and uh, go to all of the network and not have any issues with um, your size of your vessel, then uh, a narrow boat is definitely the way forward. If you're a bit more wanting the space over than, uh, than the ability to move around, then a wide beam uh, possibly could be the choice for you. Um, for me, it's definitely the wide beam uh, because I want uh, all the creature comforts of a normal home and um, the ability to still move my home. Um, I just love it out on the canal and the rivers. I get to see this all day, every day um, and I, d I don't really want to be in a house where, I don't know, I suppose I've just got the bug for moving every couple of weeks and uh, looking forward to my next campsite as such. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, it, subscribe and share. And um, if you've got any questions, uh, please put it in the uh, comments down below. And uh, I'll try my best to answer any of the questions. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.